Hey there, welcome to episode 13 of Knit Talk with a Tech Editor, the Sunday Special Edition. I'm Megan of The Unapologetic Knitter, and I'm a tech editor. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the average length of a garment relative to a body and how to measure your own clothes to make sure that you are choosing lengths that fit you the best. I want to touch on something really important. Um, not every body looks the same. Not every body looks like what you're about to see on the screen. Um, my body doesn't even look like this. I simply went online to find um, sort of a body silhouette so I could show you vertical distances. Um, what we're really looking for is the average and the average length of a body. Um, not every body and I'm saying that that way intentionally, not every body that has, for example, the same chest circumference is going to be the same height or have the same body length, the same arm length, even your um, side depth might be different. Every body is unique. We're simply using an average today. So let's talk about some averages and how we can look at finding uh, ways to modify garments to fit you and your unique body. So the average body from the center of the underarm to sort of the smallest part of the waist has a length of around eight inches or 25 and a half, uh, 20 and a half centimeters, pardon me. These lengths do vary depending on how tall you are, but on average, garments are designed with this average length in mind. So let's look at how different garments fit these different bodies. And we're going to go from shortest to longest. And certainly there are garments that will be shorter than what I'm describing or longer than what I'm describing. But I'm trying to find a happy medium between um, what I see on the market and how that relates to a body. So the first example that we're going to look at is what I consider a cropped version. Anything between eight and nine inches or so from the underarm to the bottom hem would be considered cropped. Um, this is a, a length of eight or nine inches from the underarm or 20 and a half to 23 centimeters. Um, this length means that the garment will sit right around your navel or maybe just below, again, depending on the length of your body. It will most likely, because I know pants are getting a lot higher waisted, but most likely be above the waistband of sort of a mid to high rise waist pant. And the amount of the ease in the garment will also affect how it wears. Um, if the body length is eight inches, but you've got very little ease in the garment, say two inches or less, the garment will fit tighter to the body and may rise up depending on your chest a little bit. If you've put in bust starts, which we're not going to cover in this episode, it will help the garment stay at the correct length. So here's an example of me in a cute sweater by Annie Lupton or Boho Chic Fiber Company. This is the Earth Folk sweater um, knit up in a worsted weight yarn and this garment is 8.75 inches from the underarm to the bottom hem and it sits just below the small of my waist so if i was to um, undo the buttons <laughs> on that den denim shirt you would probably not see my belly button but it's definitely at the narrowest part of my body um, my jean waistline is definitely below the length of the sweater that you can see there so let's move on to the next length increment that I wanted to look at. Um, this would be a garment that has a length of about 10 inches or 25 and a half centimeters from the underarm to the bottom hem. This is not considered cropped necessarily, but I still think it falls a little bit short of being full length. So I would call this a semi crop. Um, this sweater will probably fall right around the high hip or the top of a pair of mid rise jeans. It's definitely below your navel, but it will be above the pockets on your, on your, on a pair of pants. If you were wearing sort of an average rise pair of pants and just like the full crop version, the eight inches or so ease will have a pretty big impact on where this sits on your body. The less ease you have, the more potential for the garment to ride up your body a little bit as you wear it through the day. More ease will allow it to hang a little bit more drapey and sit right at the top of your pants. 
So here's an example of me wearing a garment that has approximately a 10 inch body length from the bottom of the underarms to the top, or I guess to the bottom of the sweater. Um, this sits just at the top of my pants. You can just barely see my belt peeking through. Um, a very comfortable length, um, but still isn't touching your pockets. So the next increment of length that I wanna talk about is what I sort of think of as a common or average length of sweater. Um, and that would be a body length from the underarm to the hem of 12 inches or 30 and a half centimeters. Um, if you think of like a commercial sweatshirt that you might find in a store, odds are pretty good that from the underarm to the hem, the body length is about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Um, this will often fall below the top of your pants and actually hit close to the pocket line on your pants, um, definitely below the waistline. And a garment of this length, regardless, I shouldn't say entirely regardless of ease, but mostly regardless of ease, you shouldn't see it rising up too much above the waistline of like a standard mid-rise pair of pants. But of course, again, that length is dependent on your body length. Here's an example of me from many years ago <laughs> wearing the beautiful Navalia sweater. Um, and this has a standard sort of 12 inch length body. It sits right at my pockets as evidenced by the fact that my hands are in my pockets. I guess it was cold that day. Um, but this is sort of the standard length of body. So the last length category that I want to talk to you about is anything that is 14 inches or 35 and a half centimeters and beyond. Um, these are very common lengths starting at 14 inches for cardigans, especially like a drapey or a dressier cardigan. Um, it's also 14 to 15 inches is also a really lovely length for an oversized pullover, just very comfortable. Anything beyond 15 inches and you're starting to get into sort of tunic lengths um, where you're well below the low hips uh, with the length you might even be below the bottom of the backside. Um, and much like, or I guess I, in, in opposition to some of my other examples where we talked about ease affecting the length of it, because the garment of the, or the length of this garment is so long, you're not really seeing any shortening of the garment regardless of the ease that you wear it with. Um, here I am in my everyday cardigan. I actually designed this a few years ago. And this is a cardigan that is quite long. Um, I think it is quite casual. And it is 18 inches from the underarm to the bottom hem. So this is very much into that tunic length. Um, very, very comfortable to wear with either leggings or skirts or high-waisted jeans. So now that we've looked at where the average garment lengths or average garment of differing lengths falls on the average body, let's take a look at how to apply that information to how you like to wear clothes. You probably know how you best like a garment to fit you. So now let's talk about what measurements to look for so you can potentially modify the lengths of garments that you're wanting to make. So the first thing to do is go to your closet and pull out your favorite garment, whether it's a cropped sweater, sort of a standard length sweater or a tunic and lay it flat. Get a tape measure and make sure it's on a surface that's sort of non-stick where it won't hold the garment shape in any kind of weird positions. The first measurement that we're looking for is the length from the underarm to the bottom hem. Everything we've just been talking about. Um, since so many schematics provide the garment lengths from the underarm to the hem, it's really good for you to know what this length is on your favorite garment to give you a jumping off point. So the second measurement that you want to take is from the high point shoulder or the HPS to the underarm. And again, you're gonna to wanna to do this flat and the high point shoulder is at the sort of neckline edge of your sweater, not necessarily the top of the collar, but where the collar meets the regular part of the shirt. <laughs> you don't wanna be measuring at a shoulder seam. Um, if you measure from the high point shoulder, this gives you the full yoke depth from the top of your shoulder to your underarm. And once you've got that, you now know sort of your desired yoke length. So if a pattern, for example, says, 
you know, knit even until the yoke measures nine inches or 23 centimeters. With the knowledge from the measurement of your garment, you can decide if you need to knit a little bit longer or a little bit shorter to fit your ideal garment. So once you've got the measurement from the hem to the underarm and the measurement from the high point shoulder to the underarm, you can combine those two numbers and figure out the total garment length. This is usually presented on a schematic if it's presented. It's not presented on all patterns, but this would be presented probably as the total back length. This includes any shaping for the shoulders all the way down to your yoke length plus the length of the body. So not all patterns provide that, but if they do, you can start looking for that total garment length and look at whether it all matches up with your ideals and if not, where you can make modifications. I hope you've enjoyed today's Sunday special edition of Knit Talk with a Net, Knit, <laughs> Knit Talk with a Tech Editor. I don't know why that's a tongue twister. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this coming Wednesday, I've got a new technique tutorial where I'm going to be demonstrating how to work the tubular bind off over the magic loop method. This does confuse folks and they sometimes get concerned they're gonna sew closed uh, the cup of their sweater. So we're gonna talk through that. If you found value in today's video or any of my videos, I would love for you to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel just to tell the YouTube algorithms that we're doing a good job and we can refer these videos to more knitters to get that help out there for all who need it. If you have future um, tutorial discussion or future topics that you want to see discussed, please feel free to submit the discussion form at the link in the description below the video so we can make sure we get you taken care of and hopefully sooner than later. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Sunday and happy knitting.